these folks are the life decisions I have been making the last four months. Hello folks, welcome back. Uh, yeah, it's been four months since my last booktube video and I figured I would just make a very casual Friday Reads video to, you know, kind of slip back into the sub feeds. I, I've not had a great start to the year in terms of reading. Um, there have been a lot of reasons for that, but primarily it's just been... Well, I'm going to make a video about it soon, but I have also been studying for a test and exam that I'm going to be taking in May. So that's been consuming a little bit of time as well. Um, but I have picked up a lot of books and stopped reading a lot of books. And really, if it hadn't been for some buddy reads that I've done and also reading for the booktube prize, I don't know that I would really have much in terms of books to share with you guys for the start of the year. But there are some things that I'm planning on finishing um, this weekend that I want to share with you guys. So without further ado, uh, I have first Gideon Falls by Greg Lemire and Andrea Sorrentino. This was a book that I found on Jay Shea's, or a graphic novel rather, that I found on Jay Shea's channel. Um, and I'm not going to say that he recommended this because I don't think that he liked it very much. It just wasn't for him, the art style, and I think some of the storytelling. However, the plot sounded really cool to me. So this revolves around two characters, um, a young kid living in the city and a uh, washed up Catholic priest who moves out to the country. But both of them somehow encounter this structure called the Black Barn. And legend has it that the barn has driven people to madness. And um, both of the characters have sort of become consumed, I'm guessing in a way, um, by the by the barn and what's contained inside of it. So I haven't gotten too, too far into this one, but I am really excited to read it because I do like Jeff Lemire and I like this plot and um, some of the illustrations that I've encountered, which I know his color palette tends to be a little bit bland, um, but I think that he just, I don't know, there's something about this that really just struck me as being super cool. So I'm really interested in getting to that and I'll let you guys know more about that in um, a wrap up probably of some graphic novels that I've been working on. But speaking of graphic novels that I'm working on, I finally, finally picked this up on recommendation from Celia, um, whose channel I will link, everyone's channel I mentioned, uh, I will link. But um, I got Rachel Rising by Terry Moore. So this is the omnibus. This is this is the big fatty, like 588 pages. Um, Celia has been recommending this to me for about a year now. So before I went on my book buying ban, I went ahead and ordered this because I I have faith in Celia. She and I have very similar tastes in books and graphic novels. So um, this is the story of a woman named Rachel who in the first 10 panels of this book, you, she wakes up in a shallow grave. She doesn't know how she got there. She doesn't know why she's there. She doesn't really recall the events that led to her being buried there. Um, but she wakes up and she's different. Um, she still feels the same, but there's something very obviously altered about her. Um, and so she's trying to unravel this mystery about why she got there, because there are several women in the town who um, end up sort of experiencing the same thing. And then she finds out that this town has a very sordid past with this sort of behavior and intriguing. It really, really is phenomenal. Terry Moore uh, wrote it and illustrated it. So 
Um, again, just really, really simple, simple illustrations, nothing really crazy. Like everything's just elegant and simple and beautiful. Um, and the writing is the same way. So if you guys have not heard about this, <laughs> um, definitely check it out. And I, I just really respect books that are written in this style, similar to The Walking Dead, where, um, you know, they're phenomenal storytelling that is minimal. The illustrations are also very minimal. Um, and I think that that's just such a fantastic marker of a good storyteller when they can um, get their point across without crowding, without um, filling too many pages with a lot of a lot of BS. So I appreciate this so much. And um, thank you, Celia, for the recommendation. <laughs> so um, I've already made a good dent in it, as you guys can see, but I'm hoping to either finish it this weekend or get very, very close to finishing it. So again, I'll let you guys know how that goes. Uh, the next book that I have to share with you guys is Darkness Visible, A Memoir of Madness by William Styron. And William Styron is best known for um, writing Sophie's Choice. And in, let's see, 1989, I believe, he published um, in Vanity Fair this essay. So it's 84 pages long. Um, and this had originated as a lecture that he did at Johns Hopkins University uh, talking about uh, depression. So this is really his, his memoir, his um, struggle with depression. So it started for him in 1985 and over the course of the next years would just devolve into this completely overwhelming, consuming illness to where he was very seriously thinking about ending his life. Um, he had a plan and everything. And he was able to illustrate in this and articulate so beautifully how powerful this becomes, how one unintentionally broods on this illness, this condition, which oftentimes makes it worse. But you spend so much time with it, hoping that you can figure a way out of it, that somewhere inside you, you have the ability to solve it. And oftentimes you don't, and you can't do it without help. Um, what I thought was also really fascinating was that he so much of his social circle and his creative circle was was going through the same things and unfortunately many of them were not lucky enough to uh, be able to get the help that they needed in time and it was all very sad and very unfortunate um, and then also I, I think he was able to talk very openly about um, the missteps in clinical judgment where there are so many doctors that were trying to help him and thought that they had the solutions but oftentimes just made it worse. And it's something that I, I've always thought about since I started working in the medical field was that we have made so many advances and we have so much knowledge about the body, but we still don't know a damn thing about the mind and how it works and how it works in individuals. And so I just thought this was a really, really powerful, um, very short, but very poignant and beautifully written. Um, he doesn't really try to disguise it with a lot of poetry, but uh, the writing is still very effective and gorgeous. So if you guys are interested in that subject matter, that topic, or interested in this author and you haven't read this before, I would highly, highly recommend it. So Darkness Visible by William Styron. The next book that I have to share with you guys is one that I've had sitting on my shelf for so, so long and have finally, finally picked up. And that is The Absolutely True Diary of a Part-Time Indian by Sherman Alexie. So not too far into this, but really loving what I've read so far. And I was inspired to pick this up 
because of a buddy read that I just finished with Joseph Francis Burton and uh, Chrissy from The Return Cart. And we had just finished reading uh, The Enemy Gods by Oliver Lafarge. And in that book, the main character is having a lot of struggles with identity, with trying to figure out who he is in relation to the worlds that he's straddling. So between that of being a Navajo and trying to assimilate into a more white, I guess you could say, society. Um, and this is very much filled with the same types of struggle um, with this main character. So it's, it's a YA book primarily, um, and it's filled with some illustrations and some cartoons as the main character, and this is a budding cartoonist, but also deals so much with the question of identity. Like, what is it to be a native? How does one assimilate and still hang on to the things that make them them, the elements culture, personality that make them who they are. And I got, I will, I would like to do a video about this in the future because I think that this is just, it's something that I have had a lot of questions about myself and reading the enemy gods that was written in the thirties and then reading there, there last year, there's this very clear line of the same struggle being talked about and the same questions coming up generation after generation. It's a really fascinating topic to me and I really, I, I love stories where people sort of exist in these two planes of existence or sometimes more and trying, people trying to strike a balance between what makes them them. Like what are the ingredients that go into identity um, and for me, these stories are just really personal. And so <laughs> that's my fascination with them. Yeah, those are the four books I'm planning on just kind of making some good headway with this weekend, if not finishing. Uh, I've got some videos I'm going to put out hopefully this next week. Um, some tags I definitely need to catch up on since it's been a while, but it feels good to just make stuff again. So I hope that you guys are doing well. Let me know your thoughts on any of those books if you've read them before, if you have any recommendations um, for similar books. And I will see you guys very, very soon. I hope you have a good rest of your day. Take care. Bye.